So AMD's Vega cards are officially off the ground and launched with the addition of the uh, Frontier Edition actually to the marketplace uh, with the water-cooled variant of that card coming in the very near future. Now although the Frontier Edition is not in any way aimed at the gaming market, it is natural for us to wonder how games will perform on the Frontier Edition cards because the cards are based on the same chip as likely the high-end RX Vega cards will be that are aimed at that gaming market. So the two should actually perform very, very similarly. Now for this video, I'm looking at numbers provided by a couple different sources. The first one being from Hardware Canucks and I'm using their numbers based on uh, the RX 480 versus GTX 1060 comparisons that they did both at the launch of the 480 and then six months down the road to see the type of performance gains the uh, 480 had compared to the 1060 in that time span. And then what we're going to do is take that number, that percentage gain that we saw, and apply that to the Vega Frontier Edition card with those numbers being provided for the Frontier Edition card versus the 1080 from NVIDIA. Those numbers are coming from PC Perspective, and the links for both of those uh, reviews are down in the description below to check out their full write-ups on those cards. But before we jump into the charts and see just how the Vega Frontier Edition may age in gaming performance, I just want to sort of point out, for those of you that don't know, AMD's cards have a history, and it's not a short history either, it's a fairly long history, of having their drivers age in a uh, wine-like manner. In other words, sometimes when you're buying an AMD card for gaming, it's a little bit better to look at it as an initial investment with how it stacks up to its NVIDIA uh, competition, but also understanding that there's a good chance that it'll actually gain performance in the long haul compared to the NVIDIA competition. So if you buy a card that's equivalent to an NVIDIA card from the launch, then the chances are that two years down the road, it'll actually outperform that same NVIDIA card. And that's sort of what we're expecting from the uh, Vega cards once they launch, is to see driver support get better and to see a little bit of performance increase over the long haul. So enough rambling, let's hop into the charts and see how the Vega Frontier Edition performed um, at launch and let's look at how it might perform down the line. So to kick off PC Perspective's numbers, you'll see here that in every game, the GTX 1080 does outperform the Vega Frontier Edition, um, at least on the current set of drivers. And that's important because, as we know, AMD's drivers tend to improve over time and actually give you significant performance gains over the long haul. Now, if we move over to Hardware Canucks testing of DirectX 11 gaming, you'll see that uh, the 1060, the GTX 1060 versus the RX 480, and again, we're just using this as a uh, sort of as a metric for looking at how AMD's drivers improve over time. The GTX 1060 at launch enjoyed a 12%. Uh, lead over the RX 480 at 1080p and an 8% lead over the RX 480 at 1440p. Now roughly six months later at the end of the year that 1080p lead had shrank from 12% to a 2% lead for the uh, GTX 1060 and at 1440p that 8% lead had shrunk to a negligible 0% lead in which uh, either card was basically interchangeable at that point. So since PC Perspective focused on 1440p, we're going to take that 8% gain over a 6-month period from the uh, 480 versus its 1060 counterpart and just apply that straight across the board for the PC Perspective numbers. Now obviously this projection is not perfect in any way. We're taking um, unrelated cards and just sort of assuming that driver support will improve performance. But this is completely hypothetical. If the performance does catch up to the 1080 at the same rate that the uh, performance of the 480 caught up to the GTX 1060, then the red bar here will represent the lead that the GTX 1080 still has after that driver improvement over the Vega Frontier Edition at 1440p, with the green bar representing its current lead over the Frontier Edition. And those numbers for the green bars come from, again, PC Perspective, linked in the description down below. And of course, most concerning here for AMD fans would be that uh, even with a significant gain in driver support performance, whether it happen in the very near future or as the card ages over the next six months to a year or even beyond that, the 1080 is still beating out the Frontier Edition card by a significant margin. And it's also important to note here that even though this Vega card is not uh, 
aimed at the gaming market, it is likely the top end uh, chip that's being produced by AMD for the Vega lineup. So this should be somewhat similar to the RX Vega cards that we see launched later this month uh, that will be aimed at the gaming market. So that's the quick performance rundown of the Vega Frontier Edition versus the GTX 1080 right now, as well as what we might see about six months to a year down the road as well. So comment down below and let me know if you are disappointed by uh, what we saw from the Frontier Edition or, or are you still excited about Vega and still wanting to buy into the Vega ecosystem from AMD? AMD. Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Hoosier Hardware. They are the same tag for your convenience. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.